he could spare some time. There is a significant uh, program of his party going on presently in Hyderabad. But we are very thankful, sir, that you could uh, still spare some time and uh, agree to our request to be with us. Uh, we are happy, very happy to have you with us. And without uh, wasting too much time, I would request Mr. Yachuri to deliver his talk on uh, uh, own capitalism management of democracy. Professor Anam Sina, members of the faculty and my dear students. At the outset, let me confess that I am very, very apprehensive about speaking to all of you, which is the cream de la cream of our uh, youth in our country. And I was just uh, talking with Professor Prashant Mishra, and even I was uh, flabbergasted at the amounts that you get during your internship and the salary structures that you get. But anyway, all the best, I and mean, I hope you, did, you get more. Because uh, eventually somebody gives you that much money, is making much more than what, what he's giving you. They are giving you. But uh, in the midst of all of you, to share some of our ideas, uh, that's why the sense of apprehension that I begin. And I also begin with the sense of apprehension because the topic that we are going to discuss today is a topic that if it, is, if it succeeds, that is crony capitalism, if crony capitalism succeeds, then there won't be any employment for all of you. You'll only have to be with uh, Radhyas and Rajas and uh, and uh, the ilk that, uh, that, uh, whose names we have seen, because they will manage both the democracy and the economy, and you won't really require management experts. So that is a danger also lurking there. Therefore, my second reason for being apprehensive about talking about this. But having said that, I think crony capitalism is something that the Prime Minister of our country at least twice in the Parliament he mentioned saying that India can ill effort crony capitalism. Now what is this crony capitalism and what is it that we are seeing today in our country which is of tremendous concern not only for us living through this period but also for the future of a democratic India. Capitalism by its very nature is a system which is motivated by the quest to maximize profits. So in an effort to maximize profits, all rules are bent, all situations are created, and situations are manufactured if they, if they give you newer and larger avenues for profit generation. That is a given thing about the system. But under capitalism, you will have the capitalist state always coming in to set up rules and regulations and working out methodology of operations which essentially aim at giving a level playing field to all those who are operating in these fields, in, in these areas. Now, but given the very nature of capitalism, these rules and regulations are almost bent, or always bent, and almost taken to the limits of rupture, of violation of these rules, if profits can be maximized. Crony capitalism is actually capitalism whereby a nexus between the government and the capitalists and of course the sections of the bureaucracy, now sections of the media and if these, these, uh, these get together and there's this sort of a nexus that actually determines the nature of economic activity or who gets to do what in the system. So it's crony capitalism in terms of nepotism in awarding contracts, sweetheart deals, let's say, in the sale of public properties or public sector undertakings, bending of rules and creation of avenues by which you can generate greater profits. The manipulation of the system is actually in a very rudimentary sense. The ruthless manipulation of the system or the unscrupulous manipulation of the system, that is what we, we would call crony capitalism. Now, there is one aspect also that we must recognize in India. Often people say, where is, in which area is the creativity in our country the best? I mean, we politicians normally say the creativity is the best in our public speaking, you know, because you have to stand there in front of the mic and actually keep talking, looking at the faces of the audience, and depending on how they are reacting. So we have to crack jokes, we have to get, uh, talk about some incidents, etc., etc. 
But we all discovered also, much, I mean, not so much to my type of politics, but nevertheless we also discovered the most creative ingenuity that we have in our country is on ways and means of making money and corruption. I'll tell you a small uh, story to begin with. When, when I was a school student in Hyderabad, I won't take names, but we had a chief minister who was known for his ingenuity in, in making money. And all the avenues were apparent, were, appeared totally closed, so we were thinking how would he continue to keep making his money. Then one day suddenly we found the most, the busiest, I don't know if there's any one of you from Hyderabad, there's a place called Chikatpalli there, one of the most busy market area. One morning we suddenly discovered that it was that road, a very busy road, was declared a one-way traffic. So all the shops on the right of the road, they all went to the chief minister to complain, saying our business is lost. This is only one-way traffic and vehicles are being parked to the left and only the shops on the left are selling and we are losing business. So a deal was struck. So two days later, it was a one-way traffic from the other side. So likewise, the other side shops, they went and two days later, it was back to two-way traffic. So, the, I mean, the, the creativity that we have, we can display in how to create avenues for begging money. I mean, that in crony capitalism is something which we have now seen in the 2G spectrum scan, which is a phenomenal 1,76,000 crores. Now you, at the outset itself, let me see, how does this crony capitalism operate? Crony capitalism operates when the government of the day or whoever the minister concerned can bend the rules or change the rules or change the system overnight with blatant benefit to certain companies or a certain group of to certain company or a certain group of companies. You had that happen way back, I mean now that the Supreme Court yesterday has said that uh, the CBI should investigate going back to 2001. You had a situation where you said we'll give licenses to the spectrum, which is the broadband, I mean, which is what uh, uh, we all now use with the cell phones, so when the, at the greater generation, the second generation spectrum, we said they'll give it on first come first serve basis. Once these, once these uh, things were given at that time, suddenly mid course, you said you'll shift from the license fee system to revenue sharing system. That is, those who got the license, they did not pay the license fee. The system was shifted to revenue sharing, so they moved on to revenue sharing, thereby saving some thousands of crores of rupees then, some of these companies. So this is an illustration of how you can mid-course change your system in order to benefit a certain set of companies. Then subsequently, when this present uh, uh, second generation license was given, they said we'll do it on the first come first serve basis and at the rate that was prevalent in 2001. And then you fixed up a benchmark saying that this will be the amount that has to be paid for these licenses. Licenses were bought by companies which had nothing to do with telecom sector. And then within months these companies offloaded shares of their company so that the access to the license can be given to multinational telecom corporations. And the rate at which they offloaded is at some times was at least 9 to 12 times more than what they paid for the license. No, not on corporate people can argue, saying that there is nothing, no wrong in people selling their shares and the value went up in the market so they are making the money. So what is wrong in that? What is wrong in that is the companies which have nothing to do with telecom getting the licenses, not to start telecom services, but to sell these licenses or parts of these licenses to other telecom companies, big companies, at a rate much higher or a multiple number of times higher than what they got it from the government. Now that at least should have warned us saying that, the, that this is the actual market price and we have really sold it at a much lower market price. People like us would go on arguing and shouting in the parliament saying that why don't you auction it? which is what under pressure finally the third generation, the 3G spectrum was auctioned. And you saw the difference in the prices between the 3G and the 2G because of not having an auction then. Nevertheless, to cut the story short, at the rate at which it was finally sold, there were three different ways in which huge amount of money was made, which the Comptroller and Auditor General today estimates to be 1,76,000 crores. 
And <coughs> our estimate, at least the letters that I have written to the Prime Minister, was one like 90,000 crores. But this is the amount of money that would have come to the government, governmental revenues, but that has not come now. Now, in the process, you have seen with the Raria tapes now coming out, I jokingly commented this is All India the Raria, at one point, which, which I believe, that is what I said in the parliament, the outlook apparently it had taken, uh, used it as one of its uh, headlines in its last issue. Anyway, we, we from the left are not uh, particular about intellectual property rights, so there's no problem. They, they can borrow our ideas. But, but the point is, All India Raria, once these Raria tapes came out, then you saw the actual nexus at work. The sort of people who are involved in determining who will be cabinet ministers, why should they be cabinet ministers, what are the companies and the deals that are involved, and some of the most respectable corporate faces that we've had in our country, they being dragged, like the Tatas, being dragged into this entire controversy and they're being forced to defend themselves today, actually shows the depth to which such crony capitalism has reached in our country. Earlier you used to have one once in a while, let's say, sale, sale of a Centaur Juhu hotel at a sweetheart deal, or you have sales of some public sector hotels in Delhi, which within weeks were sold for about three times the price to private uh, uh, operators or international chains. But this sort of a systematic manner in which uh, this has happened, particularly in the 2G case, it was something unprecedented even by our own standards in India. But the Worst part is that it is not only this 2G spectrum scam. You had the Commonwealth Games, and you had the Commonwealth Games where uh, some of these figures that they have put out where when we raise these issues in the Parliament, the figures they put out is amazing. They said that, that, that the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in uh, New Delhi, to renovate it, it cost you 961 crores of rupees. To renovate just that stadium. And likewise, your shooting range was 149, etc., etc., all these figures are given. And then we found, what did you find out? In order to build a brand new stadium in Nagpur, it cost, the, it cost only 80 crores of a piece. So we look at these figures.